as you continue sewing, you'll naturally become more advanced. And as you become more advanced, you'll encounter more and more complicated seams. Somewhere in between this process, you'll find yourself having to sew seams with crossing seam lines. This is a very common occurrence in dressmaking and not complicated by any means. Crossing seam lines are almost always an occurrence in dressmaking. A seam that features crossing seam lines is not treated any differently than a regular uninterrupted seam, but it will require some special attention. When aligning and stitching crossing seam lines, here are some rules you should keep in mind. Clean finish the seam allowance of all crossing seam lines before sewing the main seam. Once the main seam is sewn, you will not be able to go back and properly clean finish the crossing seam allowance edges unless you undo the intersecting stitch at this location. Always iron the finished seam allowance in the proper direction as indicated by your seam allowance finish before sewing the main seam. This ensures that all seams lay smooth and flat in the finished garment. In a garment that has a waistline seam, the top and bottom side seams and all darts have to match perfectly to form continuous connections from the bodice down. Sewing crossing seam lines requires them to be aligned face to face with seam lines matching perfectly. Insert a pin through both seams to keep them perfectly aligned. On the face of the garment, this connection should form an uninterrupted seam line. It is common for seam allowance edges to get caught and fold up in the machine stitching process. The best way to avoid this is to insert a pin on each side of the seam lines to keep the seam allowance layers flat in the stitching process. To secure the remainder of the crossing seam match all other intersecting seam lines and darts, inserting pins to keep them perfectly aligned. If you find that pins do not provide enough stability at intersecting seams, you may want to hand baste across the seam lines for a more stable alignment. Considering the intersecting seam allowances and the movement of the fabric layers, crossing seams can be difficult to keep perfectly aligned during machine stitching using pins alone. For added precision, leave all seam line pins inserted even after the hand basting is applied. When stitching, try not to remove the pin until the machine needle is inserted right next to it. Your best bet is actually walking the machine needle as close to the crossing seam lines as you can before removing the stabilizing pin. If you remove the pin too soon, the seam lines may shift away from each other. Seams come with seam allowance and multiple seam allowance layers meeting at a single point will naturally create some bulk. When working with thicker textured fabrics, the additional seam allowance can often create too much excess within the main seam. To minimize this issue, consider clipping seam allowances diagonally at each seam crossing to eliminate additional bulk. This technique is mainly used with thick, low-fraying fabrics or when there are multiple layers intersecting at the same point. 
be careful with high fraying loosely woven fabrics as trimming them may weaken the seam. In this case, consider trimming the entire length of the main seam allowance down to a lower width. This will provide a cleaner alternative for minimizing bulk. When it comes to lightweight fabrics, crossing seam lines create negligible amounts of excess bulk and so the seam allowance is treated as you would any other given that the crossing seam allowances are kept flat and correctly aligned throughout the finishing process.